I'm here with epidemiologist Bonnie Specker from South Dakota State University, who is going to give us an update on everything that has been happening COVID in our region, in our state, and nationally, and in the world. Bonnie, what do you have for us today? Well, before we get to the update, I'd like to go a little over a little bit about the COVID-19 testing. I know that um, people have come up with questions about that. So I'd like to go over the what, who, when, and why, and then also what we mean by test positivity. So what are the different tests for COVID? The, the most common one is the PCR tests. And those are molecular tests that detect the genetic material of the virus. They are the most sensitive. Um, they are the most common tests, but they do take several days for the results or one to two or three days typically. We also have antigen tests, and these are tests that detect proteins in the virus. You get results really fast. They aren't as sensitive as the PCR tests, and they have higher false negatives. And what that means is someone could have COVID but test negative on these antigen tests. But what a lot of clinics will do is if a uh, antigen test comes back negative, they may rerun the sample using PCR if the patient is symptomatic. Then we have antibody tests. These are not really widely used, at, but they're tests that detect proteins that are made in response to having an infection. And if, you're, if you have a positive antibody test, that's saying that at some point in the past, you have been exposed to the SARS um, coronavirus. But this antibody test isn't saying you're currently infected with the virus. So the antibody test results are not put on like the Department of Health dashboard. So who should get tested for COVID? Um, anyone with symptoms and that list for symptoms is quite long. So fever, cough, fatigue, loss of taste or smell ends up being a symptom that's pretty specific to COVID. Sore throat, shortness of breath, body aches, congestion, and some gastrointestinal issues like nausea or diarrhea. Anyone with a close contact with someone who has tested positive or is suspected of having COVID should get tested. Now, if supplies become limited, the Department of Health and clinics may prioritize who gets tested. And the people with priority are healthcare um, workers, first responders, people in long-term care facilities, and also hospitalized individuals, because those populations are at significant risk. So when should someone get tested? Well, as soon as they have symptoms. If a person is a close contact, they should quarantine, try to stay away from people and get tested five to seven days after they were exposed to that person who tested positive, if they have no symptoms. If they become symptomatic, they should get tested sooner. It does take time to get the test results back, especially the PCR tests, um, though that can range from the same day to sometimes seven days out, depending upon the availability of supplies and the backlog of, of testing. So why should someone get tested? Probably one of the main points or reasons is that if they're positive, this would allow healthcare providers to monitor for other conditions that may arise. Apparently in the Brookings area, they're seeing things like blood clots, um, breathing issues, things that are happening some time after that someone first comes down with symptoms. And so a lot of the healthcare providers would like to monitor for those things in patients that are, have been tested as COVID positive. COVID is a highly infectious disease. So it's important to identify who's been infected so that they can isolate themselves and prevent the spread of the virus and prevent it from moving into um, vulnerable populations or um, 
in our case, the community. So moving on to uh, test positivity, I wanted to talk a little bit about this because in the daily report, I often um, talk about it as something that we really need to work on in order to curb this outbreak. Well, what exactly is it? Ideally, what you would like to use to measure test positivity is the number of positive cases or people that have been tested positive divided by the number of individuals tested. Now the Department of Health and the CDC both use a slightly different definition, and that's the number of PCR positive tests divided by the number of tests done. Well, some people can be tested multiple times. Maybe a doctor wants to see if someone's still contagious or still shedding the virus, so they're tested repeatedly. If you use the, the test done as your denominator, those people are counted numerous times. So I personally like this definition. CDC and depart CDC in particular does not use that because in order to get individuals tested, you have to know the person's name so that you don't repeat a test on the same person or count them more than once. The information that the state sends to the CDC does not contain any identifiable information. There are no names. So the CDC can't tell, like if I were to get tested in Brookings and then I went over to Minnesota and got a test in Marshall, I would be counted twice because the CDC can't say it's the same person being tested. So it's, it's really, um, just what's available to the CDC. But the Department of Health does provide enough information on the dashboard that you can collect, you can calculate percent test positivity this, the, this way, but it includes not just PCR, but also the antigen testing. So that's what I, how I calculate it. So my, percent test positivity is a little bit different than what the state reports. Now, when would you get a high percent test positivity? Well, you get it a couple ways. If only the people that are at the greatest risk or those people who are severely ill are being tested, a higher number percent of those are gonna be positive, right? It just makes sense. But you'd also see a high test positivity if there's widespread infection throughout the community. So test positivity measures how bad the spread of the COVID-19 is in the community and also whether enough testing is occurring. If you have a high test positivity, it's telling you there's a lot of people in the community that are infected but could be asymptomatic and are spreading the disease. So before you can get the disease down, you have to be able to identify those cases. If they're not identified, they're gonna continue being in the community infecting other people. This came off of the Johns Hopkins website yesterday. It's up through yesterday. And this is all the states and where their test positivity is. The World Health Organization suggests that before governments reopen, rates of test positivity should be at or below 5% for at least two weeks. These red states, you know, Maine, Massachusetts, New York, these are all below 5%. These are the states that have higher test positivity. And you can see that South Dakota this is Puerto Rico here on the far right. This 100% is essentially saying Puerto Rico is only testing people that are extremely sick and very likely to have COVID. Idaho also has a very high test positivity. We are of the states, second in the country in terms of a high test positivity, which is concerning because that's telling you that there's a lot of spread that's happening out there that we don't know about yet. An interesting thing to note is if you look at the number of cases per population, the only state 
that is above South Dakota right now is North Dakota. But I think we will surpass North Dakota because North Dakota has a much better testing program right now than South Dakota does. And they're identify that saying that they're identifying those cases and they're going to get this outbreak under control faster than South Dakota is. This is the um, slide from the daily slides that are on the city website. And I just want to briefly go over what, what these different things are. This light blue line is the actual number of people tested on a particular day. The pink line are the number of people that tested positive. And this yellow line is a seven day running average of test positivity. So if you're saying that we should be below five, the only top percent, the only time that's happened is right here at the very end, well, the very end of May, the first week of June. All the other times we've been above that 5% South Dakota has. Right now we're close, we're about 27, 28% in the state. Um, this really needs to come down before the outbreak is under control. I hope that helps clarify and provides a sort of an explanation of what that test positivity is and why it's important to track. Yes, thank you, Bonnie. And for those out in the community, um, just if you are experiencing any COVID symptoms or you think that you may have COVID, especially if you have been exposed to someone, go in and get tested. It's really important that we get those accurate numbers so um, we know how to move forward. So Bonnie, what do you have for us as far as an update of what happened with COVID-19 last week? Okay. Um... I'm trying another, again another different format to try to make this more concise and interesting to the viewers. So the, this is presenting data through yesterday. And Brookings, we have 997 cases, 151 new cases this week compared to 78 cases the week before. So it was not a good week this past week. There were six hospital admissions this week versus zero the week before that. There were no new deaths. And we are still in com substantial community spread. And in order to get down to that moderate spread, we need less than 34 cases. Test positivity last week for Brookings was 30%. So again, if you have those symptoms, go in for testing. This graph here on the right is one of the graphs that's in the daily data report, and it's showing the number of cases by day. And you can see we had this peak back in uh, August and came down, and now we're, we're going up on a slightly another peak. And hopefully we can get that one to slow down soon. South Dakota, they have close to 30,000 cases. There were 3,906 cases last, this last week compared to 2,860 cases the week before. 1,886 people have been hospitalized since this outbreak started. There were 244 hospital admissions this past week compared to 154 the previous week. And as of yesterday, there were 278 individuals hospitalized with COVID. There have been 288 total deaths, 40 of them were this past week compared to 30 the week before. And the test positivity for South Dakota is running 29%. K-12, I wanted to update that, but the state, the Department of Health was closed yesterday and they have not posted that report for this week, but it, it'll probably be out later today and I'll include it in the daily update for later tonight. Um, this is the graph for South Dakota and the daily cases. This is those two peaks. This is the Smithfield outbreak in Sioux Falls back in April. 
And then this was a peak when they screened a lot of the Smithfield families. As you can, we had this nice period of relatively flat cases and we are definitely on a fairly steep increase at the moment. In the US, close to 8 million cases, 355,000 new cases this past week compared to 316,000 the previous week. So that is increasing and you can see that in this graph here where we're starting to go back up again, whether this is the winter fall, the beginning of that outbreak's not clear right now. There have been 220,000 deaths and they have been pretty steady over the past two weeks at um, 5,100 deaths per week. So worldwide, we have 37.7 million cases, 2.35 million this past week versus 2.09 million the previous week. There have been 1.08 million deaths and the deaths have been steady over the past two weeks at 39,000 per week. So not um, a good situation. These are the number of deaths per day plotted here. And again, these are available in the, in the daily slides that are sent out. As far as the travel restrictions, there's the same as they have been for a couple weeks now. And these are updated every day with the link. You can go to that if you're planning on traveling. Protect others, wear a mask, socially distance, and please get tested if you have symptoms or are a contact with no symptoms. Hopefully well, thank, we get this under control. Thank you, Bonnie, I appreciate it. Thank you for updating us with what's been going on with COVID-19 over the last week. No problem.